Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 18 of What If Naruto Became the Green Lantern. If you guys enjoy this What If and want to see part 19 of it, comment down below and let me know. Check out my new videos of My Hero Academia What Ifs in my second channel and give it some love as well. Link is in the description. And go ahead and check out other What Ifs in the channel. Before we start, please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. When Naruto arrived at the cave, the damage was still being repaired. Since he figured the Zeta tubes were down he entered through the docking bay. There he saw the hole, where Sphere must have hit a wall. Also there was John, and a person who Naruto figured was another member of the League. It took him a bit, but he recognized him as Captain Adam from the battle with Amazo. John. Naruto called out as he floated down to the Martian and Adam who were repairing a console. Naruto. It is good to see your return despite the current circumstances. Said John mentioning the damage from the attack. Can either of you give me some details? All I got from Hal is that Mount Justice was attacked. We rushed here under the assumption that it was still under siege. Said Naruto. I can help with that. Said Captain Adam walking towards them and holding out his hand. We didn't get properly introduced. Captain Adam. Naruto Uzumaki. Green Lantern of Sector 2813. Said Naruto taking the leaguer's hand for a firm handshake. Well Naruto the attack was orchestrated by two androids who appeared to have a similar design to Red Tornado. To make a long story short they had the team on the ropes until Artemis managed to activate the EMP device via firing an arrow at the controls. It was then that Red Tornado showed up to examine the now deactivated androids only to then nearly suffocate the team and escape with his siblings Captain Adam explained. Naruto took a moment to process the information. So it looks like Red Tornado is the mole. But you're not convinced are you kid, said Kurama. No, I'm not, said Naruto. If he was why reveal it now? And why not just finish the team right then and there? None of it makes sense. Where's the team now? Asked Naruto. In the main hall with Batman, Green Arrow, Black Canary, Superman, and Captain Marvel. Said John. I'll join them there then. Said Naruto nodding to both of them and flew off. It took him only a few seconds to reach the main hall. And when he arrived he saw Connor holding Calder by the front of his uniform with an expression of anger as the others watched. The boy isn't the only one who is angry at the moment. Said Kurama. There is concern for Calder too, but it's colored with anger towards him as well. For what I don't know. Naruto listened as he saw Superman move in and break them apart. Hey what's going on here? Asked the lantern stepping in between them. Calder kept the fact that there might be a mole in our team from us. A fact that nearly got Ngan and the rest of us kill when it turned out to be red. Said Connor. Allegedly, Connor. Said his new older brother as Clark tried to calm him down. We don't everything yet. How can you say that after what he did? He demanded. Because if he was, why now? And why didn't he kill you when he left? Naruto said, voicing his own questions, not just to Connor, but to the rest of the team. If he was the mole, then he would have fully suffocated you. It's in his ability to do so. And said he took enough air out of all of your lungs to just knock you out but still recover. The rest then looked at each other processing what Naruto was saying. It does make sense, said Robin. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that Calder lied to us. He didn't trust us. For the record I also had knowledge about the possibility of there being a mole said Naruto. What? said Wooly. So you both kept this from us. Naruto wanted to tell all of you about the situation. Said Calder suddenly. But I ordered him not to say anything despite his reservations of it. He could have said something, but at the time we both decided that a quiet investigation was needed to protect the team. Protect us from what? asked Artemis. Information that could save our lives. Or risk them further by tipping the mole off. Said Naruto. Gan almost died Naruto, said Connor. I understand that said Naruto keeping a calm voice. I was scared as well. But here you all are still alive, and in one piece. This got the team to calm down somewhat as they looked to each other. Enough. Said Batman making everyone turn to him. With Red Tornado missing the cave will be monitored by rotating supervisors. He then gestured to a tall man with short black hair and blue eyes in a red costume with a short white cape and a lightning bolt in the center of his chest area. Captain Marvel will take the first shift. Said Batman. I'm really looking forward to hanging with you guys. He said cheerfully. Naruto noticed how he said hanging. Almost like he was talking to people his own age, which was strange for an adult. Unless he isn't. He thought to himself thinking about the times that he and others have used the transformation jutsu to pass as others which included outside their age groups. He turned his attention back to his teammates who, while Connor still looked ready to take their leader's head off. Connor then looked Calder straight in the eye. As soon as I'm done dismantling Red Tornado you and I will. Red Tornado is a member of the Justice League said Batman overhearing their conversation. He is our responsibility. You will leave him to us. And have you found him, or have any idea, where he is located since the attack? Asked Naruto. Not yet, said Batman. 
I know this is difficult for you, but Batman is right. Red is Justice League, so we will handle it for now. Said Diana trying to placate the young heroes. And because Batman has another assignment for the team. Said Superman putting up the holo of a newspaper clipping. Although from what Naruto could tell of his reluctant tone he figured the team was going to like it. Mayor gets attacked by Gorilla Gorilla. Wooly Red. Are you serious right now? Batman please. Don't tell me you're sending us on this joke of a wild gorilla chase. Said Robin. I never joke about that mission. Said Batman with his voice a few degrees more serious. If that were even possible which got Robin to quiet himself. I've studied the patterns and checked the sources. Mayor Hill's attack is the latest of these incidents. He then turned to Calder. The quality team will investigate. He said. Mind if I say something first? Naruto asked. Are there any questions? Asked Batman. Not to be rude, but I was talking to Calder, and it involves the team. Since you want to keep things separate. Said Naruto. Batman frowned but nodded as he went his fellow league members. Naruto then turned to the team with Calder standing next to him. Listen guys. I know that we have a new mission out. Not the one we wanted, but if Batman says there is a pattern to these gorilla attacks then there is one. I also know that there is broken trust between us. He looked to Calder who tried to remain impassive. But all the same we have a mission to complete. When that if so needed I will complete by myself if need be. What's that supposed to mean, said Artemis. Exactly as I said Artemis, said Naruto. Right now emotions are high, and you don't seem to trust Calder to lead at the moment. Going into a mission right now with us not united can and may lead to disaster with us dead. More like them dead than you kid, said Kurama. Yes but they don't know that, said Naruto. So as I said I can and will do this mission alone if need be. Personally, I'd rather not do that since a team can be better. But only when each of us is united and on the same page, said Naruto look at each one of his team members. They each looked at each other realizing the same. I will give you guys an hour to decide what you want to do. It's your decision on whether or not you think you can get a grip on what has happened and be able to trust each other. Said Naruto turning and walked past the leaguers to take a closer look at the report on the whole screen. Heck of a speech you just put out. Said Daina. Had to try something to get them to listen. Said Naruto with a sigh. I told Calder that it was a bad idea keeping the fact there was a possible mole on the team. But since he is in command I decided to follow his judgment. You think you should have? Asked Daina. Perhaps said Naruto. But I agreed with it, because he explained that, if there was a mole we shouldn't risk tipping him or her off. It's a moot point now, said Daina. Is it? Naruto asked. You think that Red Tornado is the mole? What about you, said Green Arrow cutting into the conversation. I think if Red Tornado was the mole he would have killed the team via suffocation. His powers would allow him to that. Instead he left them unconscious and left with his siblings. I don't believe the mole would have left it looking like he was certainly guilty. Daina smiled. That man pretty much said the same thing you just did. But it doesn't matter right now. Said Naruto knowing that he wouldn't be able to do much without the league's approval. But that said I gotta go. Said Green Arrow walking to the Zeta tube. Where are you going? Asked Aina following him as the tube activated. Still working on something. Said Green Arrow. I'll see you later Dina. And with that he was transported leaving a visibly frustrated black canary behind. I know it's none of my business, but is there trouble in paradise? Asked Naruto. Smooth. Real smooth said Kurama sarcastically. What? I'm just asking. Said Naruto though he admitted to himself the wording could have been better. I don't know. She said. We were at dinner, and then he got a call on his phone. He said it regarded a case he was working on. Not that unusual given our line of work. Said Naruto. I'm sensing a bug coming. But, she said with a smile at the lantern's wit. He didn't bring me along, or even told me what was going on. Which is weird since aside from being together we are also partners. Granted we each have solo missions, but more often than not we are a team. So what makes this different? Asked Naruto. I tried to ask him about it when he got home, but he just told me it was nothing. But he had this look on his face like something was worrying him. I ask he just changes the subject or stonewalls me. Said Diana sounding more frustrated and sad as she spoke. How long have you two been together? Asked Naruto. As a team or a couple, she responded. Uh. Said Naruto scratching his head on how to proceed. Both I guess. Daina just shook her head and smiled at the young shinobi. I'm sorry Naruto I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. To answer your question it's been almost 4 years. Over 2 of them being in the same apartment. And we've been a great team together in both regards which makes this distance that Oliver has put between us strange. Naruto considered his next words. If he's working a case who would he go to for it? Barry Allen. You would know him better as the Flash. Said Daina immediately which surprised Naruto. You just told me the secret identity of a superhero just like that. I figured since you helped take down Amazo, that you've earned it. The majority of the league shares that opinion. Dina explained before gesturing to Batman who looked to be in communication with others of the league. Most of us anyway. Well with that in mind I suggest talking to Mr. Allen about it. 
said Naruto. That's a bit direct though, said Dina. If Green Arrow, a man who should trust you absolutely, is giving you the rune round and being direct about it with the other person who might be involved would be the best solution, said Naruto. Dina paced for a moment in front of him thinking what he had said. Another minute passed, before she turned to look at him. Thanks Naruto. I think I will do that, she said. Through that she put a hand on his shoulder grateful for his advice, and stepped into the Zeta tube. That was well handled, said another voice. He turned to see Captain Marvel walk up to him. I hope so I keep getting told that, said Naruto. He looked to see the team approach him. We have decided to take the mission, said Calder. Well that's good to hear, said Naruto. But there is going to be a change, said Wally. We still have issues with Calder here. So for this mission we want you to lead us this time Naruto. The young man blinked at hearing this processing this information. Pardon, he questioned. Like he said. You even mentioned with our current issues it could get us killed. And even though you didn't tell us about them all you at least you objected to not telling us. So we figure you should lead us on this mission. Said Artemis. Plus it's better than Wally leading us. Hey, exclaimed the speedster. Naruto facipumed and rubbed his hand over his face. He could hear Karamo laughing at this situation in his head. And all of you are agreed with this arrangement, he asked looking to each of them including Calder. We have, said Calder. Although sad at the lack of trust he had with the team part of him was relieved. Naruto both in missions and training had proven to be more experienced than the rest of his friends. Even more so than Robin. Naruto sighed. Fine. Just this once. He said not liking this. Prepare yourselves and meet me at the bio ship. As they moved to the hangar Naruto looked to Connor. Connor hanged back for a second. The Kryptonian half-breed did so with Clark walking next to him. I noticed you seemed concerned with Ngan earlier, when you were about rammed Calder into the wall. Said Naruto. Connor looked between the two of them. Like I said to Clark I was worried about all of us. But you mentioned Ngan first before the team. Said Clark. With your voice raised, I might add. Connor looked at the two of them. Naruto spoke next. But dude we kinda guessed, that your relationship with each other has gone past friends here. The two of you are making googly eyes at each other for days after your undercover mission to Bell Reef. And we know that you want to keep it a secret from the rest of the team, though to be frank you two suck at keeping it a secret. Said Naruto my worry is how it will affect the mission. What do you mean, asked Connor. I mean that out there on mission she should be your teammate not your girlfriend. Not saying that you shouldn't be concerned for her because you can't help it. I am saying that you should show her the respect she is due. Said Naruto. If she needs help, your help, then she will ask. But if she doesn't then you being both a good teammate and boyfriend should honor that. Clear. Connor took a moment to consider what he was saying and took a deep breath. I understand. Said Connor. Good. Said Naruto. Now get going I will meet you at the hangar. Said Naruto. Connor did so, and left to join the others. Good luck. Said Superman as Naruto flew after the others. Thanks. He said. He moved to hangar just in time, to see Connor tell Sphere to stay. He also saw Captain Marvel fly up next to him. Are you coming with us? He asked. Sure. It'll be a blast. Said the captain. With respect captain, well you would be invaluable my team can handle this. Said Naruto. It might be better to monitor us here in the cave in case we need to get in touch with you, if we need help. Naruto couldn't help, but noticed the look of disappointment on the hero's face but he nodded. Okay but only if you're sure. Said Captain Marvel. Don't hesitate to ask, if you need help. Naruto nodded in response. Still would have been fun. Next time. Said Naruto. Captain Marvel seemed to perk up at this possibility, and flew back to the main hall of the cave. He's a kid. Said Naruto going over how the adults seemed to act, and the kind of words he used. Plus the childlike excitement he seemed to have. Yeah. I mean how many times did you, or Konohamaru use the transformations jutsu to look like someone older, said Kurama. More times than I care to count. Said Naruto with some embarrassment at the sexy jutsu both of them used. Shaking his head he looked to see Kid Flash and Robin were the last, to get on board watching the scene unfold. At least someone here trusts us enough to stand up for us. Said Wally. Naruto knew they were talking about equality. They'll get over it. Said Naruto as they got on board, and the ship departed out of the hangar. India, they landed in the forest where the attacks were the most frequent per the intel that Batman had given them. With the ship cloaked they hovered the landing zone where Robin and Artemis dropped down via harnesses to scout the area for any potential threats. The others soon joined them with Ngan, Calder, and Kid Flash in stealth mode. Naruto was the last to join them as he floated down following the others, and making the least amount of noise as possible. Alright here's the plan. We'll split up to cover more ground into teams. Artemis and Ngan will check out the eastern side of the forest. Kid Flash and Robin will check out western part. Calder and I will go south. Superboy that leaves you with north. Said Naruto who then looked to Connor. You the odd man out here. You got this? Naruto asked. I can handle it. Said the boy of steel. Alright. 
If you guys encounter anything like in the report be it gorillas, elephants, or just anything that you feel that you need backup let us know. Said Naruto. Miss Martian link us up. The young Martian did so. Everyone online. She asked telepathically. Everyone responded in kind. So am I. Said Kurama surprising them. What did you think that Naomi and Naruto had told you about us that you wouldn't hear from me again? No Mr. Kurama. Said Miss Martian. It was just unexpected to hear your voice. Understood. But it's just Kurama girl. No mister. And no lord either. Said the tailed beast. You heard him. Said Kurama. May I also say that you all have made a fine choice with Naruto being leader for the day. Said Kurama. Naruto grumbled at that. Anyway, said Naruto out loud. Any questions? A moment of silence came in with no one asking a question. Okay then if no one finds anything we will return to the LC before dawn. Move out. He ordered. As they each left Connor called to Miss Martian telepathically through their own kind of private channel, that she made sure it was exclusive to the two of them. Gan. Be careful. He said to her. This made her smile. Both stating that he was worried for her, but respected her still. You too Connor. She responded. With that they left their separate ways. Naruto could feel Calder look on him as they moved through the forest. You have something to say, he asked. I hope not to pry, but you have stated in the past, that you do not wish to take command in the past. Said Calder. I have said naruto but it just seems that you have a natural ability for it said calder naruto remained silent for a moment it's just temporary until they cool off after this mission i think we should tell them who it was that tipped us off in the first place and get it straightened out even so all of us myself included voted for you to have us lead this mission that and with how you took command of the situation proves that you have more to offer than me as leader said calder take command said naruto halting their march in the woods i've had to follow orders before and though I disagreed with some of it, I followed because my sensei and leaders told me, and it saved my life on more than one occasion. And I learned from them. You need to do the same. Like you did. And like Batman did. Said Calder coming to the realization. So ended the lesson. Said Naruto. Now come on. We still have a mission to finish. They continued walking through the forest. As they did, so Calder pondered his words and the wisdom in them. But it still didn't shake the belief that it should be Naruto leading them and not himself. Central City. Dinah followed Naruto's advice, and went to someone that both she and Oliver trusted to go to when finding clues or evidence. In this case to call on Barry Alanaka the flash of the CCPD crime lab. An appointment was made and sure enough Barry had scheduled some time for her to come in. She appeared as Black Canary so it was easy enough to do so. She didn't like having to use her status as a member of the Justice League on what was a personal matter between herself and Oliver. But since her boyfriend wasn't being upfront about what he was doing she didn't see much choice. She walked in to see Barry working on something and glad to find him alone in the lab. It's any wonder Iris sees you at all with all the time you spend working. Said Dinah. She still doesn't understand how I am always late for dinner. And neither do I for that matter. Said Barry. They just smiled and hugged. Always good to see you Dinah. Said Barry. Likewise, Barry. She responded. So as much as I would like to think otherwise I'm pretty sure you didn't call me just to catch up. What can I do for you? The speedster asked. Dinah took a moment to think about what she was going to say. Finally she just decided to be blunt. Ali got a call during our date a couple of weeks ago. I thought it was a case, but he told me it was nothing for me to worry about. Thing is we have always worked together, even before we started dating, so I found it odd. When I asked again he said it was nothing. But I can't shake the feeling that he is hiding something from me. You and him have always been close friends so, if anyone besides me would know what's going on it's you Barry. The speedster's smile disappeared immediately after hearing that. He looked around, as if trying to think of how to answer. Dinah waited wondering what it was that Barry was thinking about. Finally he opened a drawer and took a piece of paper out. Let me be clear about something Dinah. He said. I don't want to come between you and Oliver. But at the same time you should know what's going on. He'll probably kill me for showing this to you. But truthfully you're my friend too and you shouldn't be kept in the dark. He handed her the piece of paper. What am I looking at here? She asked. A few days ago he came in with the two hair samples. He told me to run a DNA test on both of them. I thought at first it was for evidence. Until I saw that the second hair strand belonged to Oliver. His DNA is on file that's how I know it was his on the second hair sample. Said Barry. And the first she asked but somehow already knowing where this was going. This one he pointed to the first sample. Was the hair sample he had accompanying his own. As you can see from a chronological standpoint. They are a match. She said. Oliver has a son. Barry nodded as she handed the paper back to him. From my guess it was back in his younger days when he was still a playboy. Before he was marooned on that island. Barry said as Dinah woke past him trying to process the situation. I understand what you're saying Barry. She said with clenched teeth. But it isn't the fact that he has a son that is bothering me right now. Barry nodded. 
Is there anything you need? He asked. No, she said taking a deep breath. You've been honest with me, and I thank you for that. The rest I have to handle on my own. And with that she left the lab. Barry looked down at the lab results in his hand, and wondered if he made a mistake. He shook his head. She needed to be told Oliver. He thought to himself. Truth was he didn't feel right with this cloak and dagger stuff. He wouldn't do it to Iris. So why would Oliver not tell Dina? He loved her. Shouldn't that mean he should trust her? India, this is it. Said Naruto as the rest of the team arrived at what looked to be an abandoned lab. In truth they knew better. Soon after splitting up each of them had been attacked by mutated animals. The koala quickly pointed out that they were colored, and that was what was controlling them. One slash later and the elephants stopped attacking them. Relaying this info to the team helped them. Both he and the koala found a tiger collared standing there. Naruto sensed something was off. Sure enough as they got to the jungle cat's position Pyan showed up and tried to electrocute them. He managed to create a shield around the two of them, and destroyed the pines. Kurama told them both, that he sensed that tiger's remorse, and as such removed the bindings. Though it could not speak it was nudging them towards a direction. From there it was a matter of following the beast until they reached the compound. Kana you in position, asked Naruto. Behind the compound as you told me. Said the boy of steel. Ready when you are. And your new friend, he asked. This time Kurama answered. Oh he is definitely ready to give payback. Said the tailed beast. What friend is he talking about? asked Artemis. A stray in the forest, that he became fast friends with. Said Ngan with a smile on her face. And what exactly are we doing? Asked Kid Flash. Isn't it obvious? Said Naruto with a smirk on his face. We knock on the front door and Kana comes in the back. From there they moved forward, and destroyed the door in front of them. The lab was front and center. Inside they found a gorilla uncolored with a red beret on his head, a green harness, and carrying a mini gun. On the beast's right was what weirded out Naruto the most. There he saw a brain in a bowl on top of a robot body. Okay that's just weird. Said Naruto out loud. And I've seen some weird shit. So the young heroes have arrived. Said the voice coming from same disembodied brain with a French accent. And it speaks. Said Naruto. That's the brain, said Kid Flash. We can see that. Said Artemis. No I mean he's the brain the supervillain. Said Kid Flash. Used to be leader of his own organization before the Doom Patrol took it down. I see that my reputation precedes me. But it is time for this little adventure to come to its end. Said the brain. Mel restrain our guests. Immediately following this Mel pulled out a remote control from his harness, and pressed the button. Instantly four pylons emerged around them. At the same time a gust of wind blew through them, and the pylons were suddenly sliced in half before activating. What? Called out the brain. Superboy now. Naruto called out telepathically. Instantly the wall behind the brain in Mala was destroyed and Superboy emerged. Shirt tattered with claw and bite marks he stood with what Naruto guessed was the creature that gave said marks. A white wolf mutated like the other animals they had encountered with no color on him. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thought Naruto in his own private channel of his mind. I hate minkies. Said Connor seeing Nala. The wolf beside him growled in agreement and joined him in charging the ape. The boy of steel leapt into the air and came crashing down on empty space as Mal managed to dodge out of the way of his fist. The ape spilled up his minigun. Though Superboy managed to shield his new friend and ally, he grunted in pain as he was pushed back from the hail of bullets. The beast turned his gun around to the others and fired only to meet a green energy wall stopping the bullets along with energy beams from the blasters of the brain's blasters. Really, said Naruto. Take them down. Calder moved forward using his water bears to create a shield. From there Mgan telekinetically took away the minigun with Kid Flash taking the beret and the green vest which had ammo on it. Naruto extended his shield to make sure none of his team were hurt from the brain's blasters. It had not taken long for them including Superboy's wolf and the tiger to lead them to the base to surround the two villains with Mal roaring in defiance. Calm yourself Messer Mal. This shall not be our Waterloo, said the brain. Suddenly the brain's body opened up. Looking to the rest of the group they looked like weapon ports as if the brain was preparing a final stand. Everyone get down, said Kid Flash. Naruto went into action, and fired a beam at the two of them. Would that encase the brain in Mala inside a bubble construct? Or that you could do that? Said Kid Flash seeing the reasoning behind putting someone armed with weapons into what he assumed was an indestructible bubble. If the villain was surprised he did not voice it. Au revoir Manami. Said the brain. He teleported from the bubble with Mala roaring inside his. He's angry alright. But it seems to be mostly at being captured. Not at his master leaving him. Said Kurama to the team. That gave them something to think about. Well we lost one, but managed to get his partner. Said Naruto. Call Captain Marvel. Tell him we have a prisoner for Bell Reef. Or the zoo. That decision we leave to them. The team worked from there to free the rest of the animals that had been modified of their collars, while Naruto kept Mala inside the bubble construct. 
During the process Captain Marvel arrived, and somehow started talking to the tiger after the others returned. All the callers have been taken care of, said Robin. Good job guys, said the captain. He turned to the tiger. Then you'll keep an eye on the forest. The tiger roared in acknowledgement. From there the beast walked off into the forest with the rest of the animals. Not all left the team, though with Connor petting the wolf. Can I keep him? He asked his fellow team members. First the sphere now this beast. What's with you, and picking up strays, asked Kid Flash. Maybe because he's a stray himself, said Miss Martian with a smile. Aren't you? Yeah I guess. Connor responded to her with their link setup. Connor I wanted to say thank you. For trusting me, and showing how much you respect me, by letting me split up with Artemis. Said Miss Martian kneeling down to him, and grasping his shoulder. I would lime Gan. I was still scared after seeing you nearly die from being surrounded by fire. My first instinct was to protect you. Said Connor. Nearly dying comes with the job you know that. Said the Martian. Yeah I know. And when we are on mission we have to be teammates. Naruto showed me that today. Said the boy of steel. I promise to always be respectful of you Gan. But it won't stop me from being worried about you. I will keep a lid on it though. Miss Martian had to fight a blush forming on her face. Thank you Connor. And for the record it's the same for me. I worry about you too. Superboy smiled at that. Well he's gonna need a name. How about Crypto, said Kid Flash. The wolf growled. Pass. Plus Superman's dog is already called that. Said Superboy. Wolf is as good a name as any I think. Wolf barked in approval. Kid Flash sighed. Generic but acceptable. The Kuala and Naruto started to climb on board the ship with Robin leaning against it. Just tell me something. Why did you keep the possibility of a mole from us, he asked. Naruto looked to Kuala and nodded to him. The Atlantean turned to the rest of them. The source of the tip was Sportsmaster. What, said Artemis. You can't trust him. Anger? Lots of it at the mention of that guy. Although why I don't know. But that much anger seems to suggest familiarity with that guy. Said Kurama in their own private link. As in more than just the whole enemy thing. So what's the connection then, asked Naruto. I can only read emotions not minds. If we were still linked I could probably get more details but, since we are not after the mission ended that's all I can find out. Said Kurama. Would be too invasive into her privacy anyway. Said Naruto realizing how secretive the archer had been about her past. Enough to try faking his green arrow's niece. Whatever she's hiding will need to come out on her time not theirs. I did not. Said Akwala getting Naruto's attention back to the conversation at hand. It was possible even likely that he gave false intel in order to divide the team. Which if it wasn't for Naruto taking command it would have succeeded. Said Robin. I would like to think that you all would have found your way to working together with or without me being around. Said Naruto. But you were here. Said Miss Martian. And you got us in line before the mission even started. If not for you maybe we would have but things would have already been a mess. Just like with Santa Prisca, when you stopped Robin from rushing in. In any case, said Naruto trying to keep his success off their minds. Even knowing this was bad intel, as Aqualit explained to me, we couldn't just write it off. He could very well be telling the truth. And his leader Aqualit did not want to risk tipping the mole off. He speaks the truth. As he stated Naruto wished to tell all of you from the moment we heard about this intel, but as leader I decided against it, said Aqualit. Hate to say it, but it makes sense, said Robin. I am still willing to step down as leader, said Aqualit. Please say no, said Naruto in his head much to Kurama's chuckling. Shut it for bowl. All in favor of keeping Aqualit as our leader, said Kid Flash cheeringly raising his hand as the first person saying yes. The others did the same with a sigh of relief from Naruto as they did so. It would be short-lived. Wait, said Aqualit. The fact remains, that Green Lantern lead the mission. His ability to get us together for this mission and his ability to keep us in line proves once again his ability as a leader. As you mentioned Gan with how he helped us in Santa Prisca with the capture of Kaber. Our training under him, and tonight proves his ability. No, said Naruto cutting him. The team already voted you back as leader. You can't just give it away after that. What about a compromise then, said Robin. The call it is still leader until here we say otherwise. But you get to be second in command. If anyone should be that it's you Robin, said Naruto. But it goes back to Santa Prisca doesn't it? How you stopped me from stealing it and risking the mission. Said Robin smirking. Fact is I'm still learning to work with the team. And cleaning up the mess I made with during the mission with getting Imazo to Star Labs by getting Ivo. Said Superboy. Not helping, said Naruto. The facts are facts my friend. Said Aqualid. You have more experience than you care to share, that much is obvious. Especially with the group. I understand not wanting to take a leadership position. But I need someone to help me. The second in command position is the best compromise we can offer. Because truthfully I would like someone to take this from me. If not Robin then you are the next sure thing this team has to a leader. What does Kurama say about all this? Said Artemis. Surely he should have an opinion. He's known Naruto longer than any of us. 
Before he could say anything on the matter he heard Miss Martian's voice in their head. We linked. Kurama. I hear you child. And have been listening to what you all have said. To which I must say this. Naruto has more than enough ability to let this team. Problem is he doesn't want to. A desire that clearly none of you agree with. The fact is as of right now second in command is all you will get for now. Personally he should get his head out of his ass and accept the fact that he is a natural leader. But this will hopefully help see the error of his ways. Really Kurama? Said Naruto. All in favor of having Green Lantern as our second in command said Kid Flash raising his hand. The others followed instantly later. Don't I get a say in this said Naruto. Nope said Artemis. Like it or not you're the new second in command. Naruto just sighed. Fine. But don't blame me if one time I get us killed. Congratulations. Said Captain Marvel making everyone remember that he was still there. You're going to tell the League about his new development aren't you? Naruto asked. Yep. He said. See you all tomorrow. You are not coming us back to the cave, asked Aqualad. Nope. Gotta fly. He said. And with that he flew up into the air to parts unknown. Child. Definitely a child is what he is. Said Kurama. Naruto would agree, except for the lament that he was in it being named in a leadership position. I don't care right now. I just want to go home. Star City. Oliver walked into his apartment. More accurately his penthouse. As far as it goes it was humble compared to other billionaire penthouses with nice, but not overly pretentious furniture and the such. He saw Dainu was already there with her back turned. She was sitting in the kitchen island. Hey pretty bird. Said Oliver coming up to her to embrace her from behind. But as he approached her, he saw that she was tense and held back. She turned around. When were you going to tell me? She questioned. About what? Said Oliver sounding worried. About this, she yelled holding the paper in front of him. Oliver took it and looked it over and realized what she was talking about. I know. Don't. She said. Just to be clear I don't care that you have a son aside from the hope that you would be at the very least responsible for him. I care about the fact that you didn't tell me. More than that you lied to me about it being a mission. My world just changed forever Dinah. Said Oliver. Should I not be allowed at least some time to process this before saying it to anyone? I would believe that Ollie. I would. Dinah agreed. Having the knowledge that you have a child from your years as being some kind of rich playboy as the man you are now I can understand. Except you didn't keep it to yourself. You went to Barry with a hair sample for a paternity test. Oliver stood there for what seemed like an eternity before answering. What do you want me to say Dinah? That you're right. Fine I admit that. I should have come to you. But I wasn't sure until I got the hair sample. That isn't what I want to hear. Said Dinah. I just want to know one thing. Would you have ever have told me? Oliver again stood silent for a moment. I want to say yes. But at the time I didn't know if I could. How you would react to it. That put Dinah in tears after hearing that, but she stood her ground. I just said I didn't care. It wouldn't have changed anything if you had just told me. If you had trusted me with the truth. Telling me, the woman you love, the truth about have a son from a past relationship or even a one night stand that you just found out should have been a relief not a burden for you. And what about now, said Oliver. Now, questioned Dinah. Now I don't know Ollie. I had to find out from Barry who at least had the decency to be honest with me. Something you weren't. She was openly crying now. Now I just don't know. But I think we can both agree that we need some space. And thus she walked away from him. She left the apartment and walked a few meters before finally collapsing on the wall of the hallway and sobbed. Mount Justice, Naruto was sitting on the couch in the living room space of the cave. He was looking at one of the scrolls that was left to him when heard the Zeta tube activate. Quickly leaving his scroll on the table he moved towards the tube just in time to see Dinah exit it with head downcast. Dinah? He asked perking her head up. He could see that she was crying. Naruto. She said wiping her face. I wasn't expecting anyone to be up at this hour. What's going on? He asked. She immediately turned around to the tube. I'm sorry I don't why I even came here. I should go. She said. Whoa whoa. Naruto said standing in front of her. You came for a reason. At the very least let's get to the kitchen so I can get you something to drink and we can talk about it. He could see that Dinah took a moment to consider what he was seeing. She sighed after a moment. That would actually be great right now. She said. He led her to the kitchen where he got a glass of water. They both sat down in the living room with her on the couch and him on a chair. Don't take this the wrong way, but I kinda wish it was something stronger than water. She said after gulping down the water. Well we have plenty of soda, but I don't know if you would like to drink it. And as far as alcohol goes we're a bunch of kids in here. Said Naruto. The team is but you're not. Said Dinah. On this world and in this country I am. Said Naruto. Both of them laughed at the joke. Well thanks for at least getting me to smile. Even if for a moment. Said the heron. Her smile didn't last, though as her mind went back to why she came here. I know what happened. Naruto asked. I don't want to talk about it now. Said Dinah. 
In one bullet point I think Ali and I are on a break. And suffice it to say I need a new place to live for a while. Naruto knew then not to ask how his suggestion went. You can stay here for now, he said. Thanks Naruto but I can find a hotel for the time being. She tried to argue. Nonsense, said Naruto shaking his head. There's more than enough room here until you find a place. Besides this used to be the headquarters of the league anyway. The young man could see she was at least thinking about it. Do you think the team will object? I highly doubt it, said Naruto with a smile. Besides I've got some newly acquired authority as the new second in command of the team. That got her attention. Really, she said with a smile. I'm assuming with that new promotion, came with you resolving the trust issue the others had with the quality. A small part I played, that they felt needing rewarding. Not one of my ideas I assure of you of that. The shinobi said raising up for the couch. Now come on. I'll regale you with the tale as we find your room Melody. Dino laughed at that, and followed him to find a room, to get some sleep and regroup for the following days. But as they headed down the hall the Zeta tube activated again. Dino braced herself thinking it was Oliver trying to get to come back. Thankfully, it turned out to be Barry in his flash suit carrying a box of stuff. I decided to pay a visit. I guessed on what would have happened, and with Oliver in the state he was in it wasn't hard to figure out how your conversation came out. I thought it would be a good idea to get some stuff that belonged to you. He said gesturing to the box. It's just some clothes from your closet, that Oliver put in. Stuff you might want to change into to get more comfortable. Thank you Barry. You don't need to be our go-between, but I appreciate the effort. Said Dinah. I will take this, if that's alright with you Dinah. Said Naruto. She nodded. Barry gave the box with a nodded from himself to the shinobi in acknowledgement and Barry went back into the Zeta tube and teleported home. Let's get you settled in. He said. As they walked two through the halls, and reached the door Naruto decided to pose a question. I know the timing of this is terrible, but I have in mind, to bring in another hand-to-hand -hand teacher. The one I said who is probably the best taijutsu master of my planet. His name is Rock Lee, and he is very eager to come. Seeing as how you summon two totes as additional instructors I don't see a problem with it. Said Dinah. Thank you Dinah. Said Naruto leaving her alone with her thoughts. And in exchange if you want I could start looking for a new place. Who knows maybe even find a place for myself if and when I feel the time has come to stop all this babysitting. Dinah again laughed at the joke. A laughter that brought a smile to Naruto's face. Thank you again Naruto. For the help. And with that she went into her room, and closed the door. After that Naruto turned back to the table, and decided to take his scroll and head back to his room. Once he fully read it over he would need to go to Mogo and practice it. I learned one jutsu from my father. He thought to himself looking at his hand. After today with the brain's escape it might be time to learn the other to make sure it doesn't happen again. One week later, Dino walked into the room dressed in simple cotton pants, and a grey t-shirt and walked into the kitchen with Ngan making breakfast. Hello Ms. Lance. She said. Morning Ngan. Said Dino with a nod. Connor showed up seeing as how he and Ngan lived here, while the other members of the team had their own places to call home. Naruto's assumption that the team would be more than welcome with her to be among for a short time was correct. They welcomed her with open arms. That man also approved of her being their den mother for the foreseeable future until she found another place to live. Something that Daina hoped to do in the near future. Speaking of said shinobi. Where is Naruto? She asked taking her coffee. He said he went to his homeworld. He would be back shortly he said. As if on cue Naruto was coming out of his Zeta tube. With him was a young man about his age with shiny black hair and a bull hairstyle, rather bushy eyebrows and lower eyelashes. He was wearing a sleeveless green jumpsuit with an orange necromer with a comically large backpack in tow. May I introduce the present company to Rock Lee. Who is quite possibly the greatest taijutsu practitioner of my world. Lee this Dine, Connor, and Gan. Said Naruto. A pleasure to meet all of you. Said Lee Bound. Pleasure is ours. Said Ngan. I know how hard it can be at first being on a new planet so please make yourself at home. I just started making breakfast, if you want to get settled. If you don't mind. Said Lee. Gan lead him to the kitchen table and started asking question about what. Naruto was concerned at first since during the trip, he decided to go with a ship construct to make Lee more comfortable. It didn't help though seeing Lee's first space trip in a construct of any kind. In outer space no less. He did like the color though. So first hoads for guest instructors, and now you bring someone to live here who you claim is the best hand-to-hand -hand fighter of your world. Said Dinah. From what I've seen of you in a fight that's a tall order. Believe once you see him in action you will believe me. Said Naruto. Lee was the candidate that my people's leaders approved for a sort of cultural exchange. I figure Earth was as good as place as any given that our worlds have similarity. And he wants to learn the many martial arts that are here on this world. When I told him about you, he couldn't get over his excitement. And what did you tell him about me? She asked hands on her hips. Only good things. Naruto promised. I told him you were one of the greatest martial artists on this planet. 
Even on ours in terms of taijutsu with no chakra, involved you were among the very best this planet had to offer. For whatever reason Dina beamed at that. And to your other problem with finding a new place to live I think I might have a solution to that problem. Said Naruto motioning her to follow him out of earshot and pulling up a holo panel in the cave's computer. In panel she saw what looked an incomplete project area that just now looked to be getting back to completing it. I was looking, and found a townhouse project that was being done right here in Happy Harbor. The project was stalled due to your planet's recession causing a loss investors. And you became an investor for it, it's questioned Dina. Yep. Said Naruto. How much money do you have, she asked. Not nearly as much as say Bruce, but enough to be able to invest in this without feeling much of sting from it. Said Naruto. Once Lee has done introducing himself and has gotten settled then I will show him this as well. So I'm assuming, that you are also planning to move into this townhouse once completed too. Dina guessed. Eventually perhaps. Said Naruto. Now enough of about this I'm starving actually. Unknown location. The experiments prove the viability of cobra venom, not just in humans, but other aspect of life on the planet. In addition to strength with some experimentation such beings intellect can be enhanced furthering the viability of creating a variety of soldiers outside of using Cadmus. Said the brain in front of his colleagues behind their monitors. Very good. Said minus one Lear. Be assured that Mala will be released no sooner than week's end. You have our word on that. You have my gratitude for that. Said the brain. But there is something that I should add. The team of young heroes were not disorganized as we thought they would have, have been after Sportmaster hinted at the possibility of a traitor to equal it in Taipei. Are you certain? Asked Minus Two Lear. Positive. Said the brain. In fact they were even more united and efficient than normal. I have guessed as to why though. You refer to the Green Lantern in their ranks. Said Minus Four Lear. Indeed my friends. In fact if not for our intel about the lanterns, that prepared me with a teleportation device I fear I would be joining Mal in a cell right now. Said the brain. Then perhaps the time has come to truly test their metal, and truly ascertain the threat he represents. Said Minus Three Lear. We already know from the Imazo battle, that this Green Lantern is more, than what he seems to be with the demonstration of him possessing abilities, that neither of the other two lanterns have. And we can also ascertain through this team's efforts, that the League has begun to suspect, that in our organization is helping other villains work together. Agreed. Said Minus One Lira so perhaps we should give them what they already suspect. And at the same time provide the necessary diversion away from us in our light. Do you know of someone who can provide this for us? Said Minus Two Lira. Indeed. Said Minus One Lira. Louisiana Bayou weeks later, each of the now, so-called Injustice League stood looking at one of the soon, to be many tree monsters. Each member was there for their own reason Count Vertigo knew this, when he told them, what Vandal had said to him. To be the face, to hide a new secret society of villains and throw off the trail made by the Justice League. The general purpose, though Vertigo himself found it unlikely, was to get a large amount of money from the UN. But they each had their reasons for being there. Poison Ivy wanted the money. Eco-terrorism was an expensive operation after all. More than that she wanted humanity, to pay for what it has done to the earth and its plant life. Ultra Humanite's reason was for his ego. Proving his intellect superior to other of the planet. The Joker, the second in a company from Batman's rogues gallery, looked forward to bringing his certain humor to a large stage with many people dying at his hands from the concoction of combined Joker and Cobra Venom. Bringing a death with laughter to such a grand stage was something he could not turn down. Wotan joined up for the chance, to face the his mortal enemy Dr. Fate, and acquired the Helmet of Fate. Not quite likely, but it always remained a possibility. As for Black Adam his reasons were far more personal. Reasons only Vertigo knew, and for his part would keep, as long as it kept him a part of the plan. An Atomic Skull, who would provide the energy needed for the new tree weapons, just wanted the money. The first test of the new weapon is ready then, said Count Vertigo. Yes. Said Poison Ivy. Though I only hope it doesn't put too much strain on my baby. She was caressing the giant tree that had taken this long to grow to the size that would be used to control the rest of the roots that would spring up. Like the tree itself it would be enhanced with a combination of cobra venom with the joker's own laughing gas venom for offense against the people of the earth. We had this facility built exactly for that purpose Ivy. As well as to power her. Said Wooden. Atomic Skull will provide the additional energy needed, and Ultra Humanite will help maintain her vitals. You have my word on that Ivy. Said the intelligent white ape. All that power under the control of my fingertips. Said the joker with a maniacal grin that seemed eternally plastered on his face. Gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Vertigo did not want the Joker involved. Hell even most of his teammates didn't want him involved. But when Vandal called him for help with getting the league of his groups back in return for a favor down the road he couldn't say no. And the clown was one of the most prolific villains in Batman's rogues gallery with Poison Ivy possibly being the most powerful. Then the first strike shall begin tomorrow. Be ready my friends for we shall not only be very rich, but also strike a very significant blow upon our enemies. Said Vertigo. 
As they each left Vertigo looked to Black Adam who stayed behind. I know I shouldn't ask, but I want to make sure that you are focused on the task, said Vertigo. You know that I am, said Adam. As long as you and your associates keep your end of the bargain, we will. You will find what you have lost, said Vertigo. You had best keep your word count, for I will hold you to it, said Adam stepping towards him and using his height to tower over him. Break it and no nation, people, army, or whatever gods you pray to will save you from me. That is my word. Ajnan, unknown location. Mother Mew had scouted for what seemed like weeks trying to find somewhere to activate his communicator. He had heard from some of the villagers, the ones who would be in charge of building new ships, that the ninja of this nation were not to be trifled with and were said to be good with surveillance. Looking around and hoping for the best he activated his transmitter. It was already too long as is. Mother Mew, said the voice of the hologram that was being emitted. He was completely black with no recognizable feature on his face. Almost like a mask, but he could see signs of expressions on the being's so-called face. This is Von Dagel. You are late with your report. The leader of the corpse grated with the irritation. I know sir, said Mother Mew. It is not an easy to find a location given the amount of security on this planet. Even during its peaceful cycle the Ajneans are very thorough with their security. I understand. Given what the Guardian Council have said about the Lantern Naruto we should be expecting this. That is why they called upon us, the corpse, to find out who and what these people are, and what they are capable of. And when it was found out that Tomer 2 was leading a science team, to come to this planet we choose you to be our operative on this mission. Said Von Dagel. I understand sir. Said the Shadarian. And I have much to report on. Very well Mother Mew. Let's begin. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video. Like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.